Separation of variables is a very powerful technique for solving linear partial differential equations. Uh, in particular, it's very good at solving the three fundamental examples of partial differential equations that we want to focus on. And those are the wave equation, the heat equation, and Laplace equation. Now, what do I mean by linear? Well, for our purposes, linear means that if I have two solutions and I add them together, I get another solution. So the sum of solutions is a solution. You'll often see this called the superposition principle. Now, I'll get more precise later about what the definition, the real definition of linear is, but it suffices to note right now that the wave equation, the heat equation, and the Laplace equation are all linear and they satisfy this superposition principle. All right, what's the big idea behind separation of variables? Well, the idea is to make the search for solutions to our PDE easier. And we make it easier by supposing that the solutions have a special form. So we suppose that our solution, u of xt, is a product of two functions, a product of a function of x alone and a function of t alone. With this assumption, we use our original PDE, the one that u satisfies, to find differential equations, in this case ordinary differential equations, that v and w satisfy. And we're going to cross our fingers and hope that somehow these differential equations are easier to solve than the original PDE, and uh, we'll find that we're correct most of the time. Well, we can then solve these differential equations for v and w, and hopefully get many solutions. So I'm going to say v lambda, w lambda. Now the subscript lambda is, uh, we'll talk more about it later, but we can think of it just as a parameter that says I get lots and lots of solutions. And from that, of course, I can reassemble solutions to the original differential equation just by taking the product. And so we get, for every pair of solutions like this, we get a solution to the original differential equation, v lambda of x times w lambda of t. So now we have a whole bunch of solutions to our original PDE, which have a specific form. That's nice that we have all these solutions, but we can actually do something much better. We can use the linearity of the PDE to add solutions of this form together to get a more general solution to the differential equation. So we use the linearity, and we get a more general solution, u of xt, which is a, a sum over these specific kinds of solutions, u lambda of xt. Now, the hope is that this solution that we've assembled here is general enough to solve meaningful problems. And by meaningful problems, I mean initial value problems and or boundary value problems. And it works kind of like in ODE, when we have a general solution and we impose some constraints on it, which are the initial values or boundary values. We impose some constraints, and then we find the specific solution which satisfies those constraints. OK, it's time for an example. Let's go through all of the steps that I described in the last slide, and let's go through them for the wave equation. So the first step is to suppose that our solution has that special form, which is a product of a function of x and a function of t. We then plug that special form into the wave equation. And let's compute it step by step. So utt is equal to v of x times w double prime of t. And uxx is equal to v double prime of x times w of t. So the wave equation, utt equals c squared uxx, 
is the same as the following equation in v and w, v of x, w, w prime of t, equals c squared, v double prime of x, w of t. If you have never seen the argument of separation of variables, then you're a lucky person. And I encourage you to pause the video now and to really take a good look at this equation. Think about this equation and think about whether or not you can come up with any hope, any possible way of solving this equation, of finding v and w that will satisfy this equation. Okay, I hope you paused and thought about this for a little while because I'm about to show you a very clever trick for solving this equation. And once you've seen it, there's no turning back. You'll never forget it. Here's what we do. We rewrite what's in that box in the following way. W's on one side and V's on the other. Now, we make the following observation. On the left-hand side is a function of t alone, no x's. On the right-hand side is a function of x alone, no t's. The only way that a function of t alone can be equal to a function of x alone is if both functions are constant. And we'll call that constant lambda. Lambda is referred to as the separation constant. And it's no coincidence that I use the notation lambda like I did on the last slide, because lambda is exactly that constant which is, in some sense, parametrizing the solutions to the wave equation that we get from solving for v and w. So that's the trick. Now what we're staring at is a funny way of writing two separate equations, one for v and one for w, and these are the equations that we need to solve. So we need to solve. First one is w double prime over w equals lambda. It's hard to say. I'll rewrite it as w double prime of t equals lambda w of t. And the second, second one is c squared v double prime of x over v of x equals lambda. That's a little easier to say. And I'll rewrite it as v double prime of x is equal to lambda divided by c squared v of x. Now remember, c is never 0, so it's perfectly OK to divide by it. I'll box off these equations. These are the equations that we solve in order to reassemble in this fashion solutions to the wave equation. I'm happy to say that we are now done with the first two steps. We're now on the third step. We've derived the equations that result from separation of variables and we need to solve these equations. Now before just going at it, what I suggest that you do is let c equal 1 so we don't have to worry about c and try values of lambda. Try lambda equals 1, lambda equals 0, and lambda equals minus 1. Pause the video, write down the resulting equations, and see if you can solve them. Okay, hopefully you did that. Um, what you will find is you'll find for the different values of lambda, 1, 0, and minus 1, you get very different kinds of solutions. So it's necessary that we split up the process of solving these equations into cases. And these cases hinge on the sine of lambda. Let's do the simplest case first. The simplest case, as you might expect, is lambda equals 0. When lambda equals 0, both these equations uh, simplify a bit. They become w double prime of t equals 0 and v double prime of x equals 0. Now I expect that you can solve these equations and write down the general solution. General solution is for w, w of t equals some constant a plus b times t and for v, v of x equals some constant c 
plus d times x. Now I'm not a big fan of putting all these sort of funky constants in here. So what I'd like to do instead is just write down a basis for the solutions. So we'll write uh, basic solutions and the basic solutions here are 1 and t because I have a times 1 plus b times t. So they become just 1 and t. And the basic solutions here are 1 and x. And we have, have linear combinations of 1 and x forming our general solution. Keeping in mind that we're trying to do separation of variables and solve the wave equation, we can then take products of w and v to get solutions to the wave equation. In fact, they'd be basic solutions because I could take linear combinations of these and get more. So we get the following basic solutions of the wave equation. And these are all of the possible products of possible w's and v's. I get 1 times 1, that's 1. 1 times x is x. t times 1 is t and t times x. And I could take any linear combination of these guys and get a solution to the wave equation. So you could take a linear combination u of xt equals some constant times 1, call it a, some constant times x, call it b, some constant times t, call it c, some constant times tx, call it d. And that resulting linear combination would be a solution to the wave equation. We're done now with the case lambda equals 0. Let's do the case lambda greater than 0. In this situation, when lambda is greater than 0, it's convenient to write it as a square. So I'm going to write lambda equals omega squared, which is some strictly positive number. I'm going to be brave here, and I'm going to use omega and w on the same slide. Hopefully, it's not too confusing. Let's rewrite our equations then. So we have w double prime of t is equal to omega squared w of t, and v double prime of x is equal to, I'll combine the two guys that are squared, omega over c quantity squared v of x. These are some pretty classic ordinary differential equations, and I'll assume that you've seen them before, or you're at least vaguely familiar with them. And I'll tell you what the basic solutions are. In other words, the solutions whose linear combinations form the general solution. For w, we have w of t is equal to an exponential of omega times t, or an exponential of minus omega times t. For v, it's very similar. We have an exponential of omega over c times x, or an exponential of minus omega over c times x. As before, we can take all of the possible products of these two guys to get a bunch of basic solutions to the wave equation. So our basic solutions to the wave equation that result will be u of xt equals well, e to the omega t times e to the omega over c x, and I'll write that as e to the omega t plus x over c. e to the omega t times e to the minus omega over c x. I'll write that as t minus x over c. And also e to the minus omega t times e to the omega over c x. I'll write that as e to the minus omega times t minus x over c, and also e to the minus omega times t plus x over c, being that final product. As before, any and all linear combinations of these basic solutions will again be a solution to the wave equation. So any sum of these four guys with any old constants out in front will again be a solution to the wave equation. OK, our last case is the case when lambda is negative, and we'll write lambda as minus some number omega squared. 
these equations will become w double prime is equal to minus omega squared w and v double prime is equal to minus omega over c squared v. As before, these are not wild and crazy ordinary differential equations. Hopefully you've seen these before and can solve them. And when you do, you'll get the basic solutions, which are sines and cosines. W of t equals either cosine of omega t or sine of omega t. And v of x equals either cosine of omega over c x or sine of omega over c x. And as before, the basic solutions of the wave equation will be all of the possible products of these guys. And those will be u of x t equals cosine of omega t times cosine of omega over c x cosine of omega t times sine of omega over c x sine of omega t times cosine of omega over c x and sine of omega t times sine of omega over c x all of these guys will be solutions to the wave equation and any linear combination of these guys will be a solution to the wave equation. Okay, we've done quite a bit in the last 15 or so minutes, so I'd like to end with a quick summary just so we can kind of get it all together in our heads. So the first step was to look for solutions of the wave equation which had the following form, product of a function of x and a function of t. We then found by some calculation that that assumption implied that w and v satisfy certain ordinary differential equations. And those differential equations depended on a parameter, lambda, which was our separation constant. We were then able to solve those differential equations, and we got a whole big pile of solutions based on assumptions on lambda. Lambda equals zero, lambda positive, or lambda negative. It's great that we have all these solutions because all of these solutions will allow us to solve certain kinds of problems, initial value problems, boundary value problems, and we will do that in follow-up videos. Now, let me end with a question. And this question is to test your basic understanding of the process of separation of variables. And here's the question, it's a little vague. The question is, can we mix and match values of lambda. Let me explain what I mean. Let's suppose that we choose a value of lambda. Let's say lambda equals zero. And we look at these equations and we solve, say, just one of them. How about the v equation? We solve it and we get v of x equals, say, x. Now, Let's choose a different value of lambda. Let's say lambda equals minus one. Now we go back up and we solve the w equation with lambda equals minus one, and we get, say, w of t equals cosine of t. Now, the assumption was that u, the solution to the wave equation, is a product of v and w. So take the product of this v and w, and tell me, is it a solution to the wave equation? And if not, why isn't it? Why was there a problem when I mixed these different values of lambda? Okay, see you later.